Hi and welcome to this video series documenting the Predator 2 control surface mapping utility for Ableton Live. In this first video we're going to be taking a look at the installation and setup process on your Mac or Windows computer. One of the things that we wanted to achieve with the rewrite was to make this process as smooth and easy as possible both for existing users and for newcomers. After purchasing Predator 2 you'll be able to download the zip installer from the Isotonic website and you'll also receive by a separate mail a license file. I've just stored both of these in a directory on my computer here and to install the main application we can open up the zip file and either double click on the package for OS X or the MSI for Windows. Clicking on that will just give us a standard installer which we can uh, click through. So we can run up the app now and the first thing we'll get on the first run is the app asking for a license file. So we can take the license file that we also received in a separate mail, remember, drag that onto the top and then it asks us to restart to finalize the installation. Okay, so the license file has now been accepted and the next thing we want to do is to install the base scripts for Predator. They come in a predator.zip file provided in the installation zip. So if we go back here and we go to our zip file, we can see that we have a predator.zip in here. So I'm just going to unzip that to my hard drive and then drag that onto the main window. Once we've dragged the file onto Predator, we get asked which scripts we want to install. We always need to install the base scripts and then we have the option of installing the bundle scripts which are the APC 40, 1 and 2 and push 1 and 2. I'm going to skip the APC 40s and then install the push scripts. Now we've installed the scripts. If you've got an installation of live running then you need to restart. If not, then we can just start up live to check that everything is okay. So I've started up live 10 now. I can see that it's recognized push two with the standard script. So I'm going to go down now and select the push two Excel script. So I can see on my push two that that's been recognized. And if we go back to the Predator 2 main window, we can see that the live indicator has turned green here, indicating that we've got a connection to live. The drop down selector here allows us to select which controller we're currently modifying, and any entries in green here are actually up and running in live. We've loaded the scripts, there's no problems. So this can be used as a verification that everything is running fine. We can also use Predator to install any other Isotonic remote scripts that we have. So I've got the launch control XXL script here. You can just drop that onto the window, say to install, and go and restart live to pick up the changes. The live indicator here will turn to an amber color when Predator is waiting for live to be restarted. I'll just shut down live. The indicator goes red to show that we've got no live connection currently. And restart. And we can see that we've reconnected to live and we now have the launch control XXL script available. So I'm just gonna go into live and connect that up. Select launch control XXL. Okay, and then back to Predator 2, and we can see that this has turned green as well, saying that we have connection to the script, everything's up and running fine, and we can start using Predator to map it. 
The drop down here contains all instances of Live that are in the default locations, either on OS X or on Windows. If you wish to add a custom location, then you can use the plus button here and navigate to your instance of Live. If you select that and it's valid, then it will be added to the list of available instances. In this list of available instances, anything with a red background is still awaiting for the base Predator scripts to be installed. So if I wish to then use this instance, I repeat the process of dragging the predator.zip file onto the window, which will then install the scripts for this custom install. Finally, in this video, we're just gonna cover reporting issues. If you do have any problems, then click the report button here. This will create a report log that contains everything we need to diagnose an issue. Now, if you have multiple versions of Ableton on your machine, then this will attempt to guess the correct version. But if it doesn't, then you can select from this drop down the instance that you're running so that we can grab the correct log file. Hitting OK will then take you to a save dialog where you can specify the location to store the generated zip file. And once this has been done, you can raise a ticket on the Isotonic website and attach the report file to that. Thanks for watching and we hope you have fun with Predator 2.